So here we are guys in Beijing in an area that people probably don't know very much about because of the art scene in China being completely squelched by politics. We all know about Ai Weiwei who was a very great artist but a lot of his work was politically motivated and nobody really knows to this day whether or not he was put in prison because his work was politically challenging or because of tax evasion. But today we're gonna check out the Beijing art scene and see what's going on. All right, come on, let's do this. All right, here we are at 789 with a great Italian restaurant. And we are gonna head inside because rumor has it, it's got a real Italian chef running that kitchen. So I'm looking forward to get some authentic Italian food right here in Beijing. All right, we'll see you guys inside. Well, it's not starting out so well this time. I've got to admit, I've been here before and it used to be really good, but I've come inside now and it's completely remodeled and uh, service has gone down the shitter. Let's hope the food itself hasn't gone down the shitter. Um, they used to just hand out, uh, as you sit down to your table, you get a nice uh, thing of focaccia bread and stuff like that, which they don't have anymore, sadly, because focaccia bread's really hard to find in general, but um, I had to go back and give them my order again because apparently, uh, they couldn't understand the order the first time and then uh, I had to serve myself the little snacks that are here now in place of the focaccia because despite the fact that I asked for it twice they totally failed to uh, bring that to us so so far it's a one star rating and let's see if it can move up Alright, so we're gonna give this pizza a shot and hopefully it can manage to struggle its way up to a two star given the service. Um, the pizza looks good, it looks kind of authentically Italian and whatnot. So um, let's just see what's going on with it. They couldn't understand that I wanted Italian sausage on it despite the fact that they have other pizzas on the menu that have Italian sausage on them. So they just couldn't get past that fact of figuring out I wanted Italian sausage on this pizza. So what do you know, let's give it a shot. All right, there it is, nice and thin the way it should be. The 
That's tomato sauce right out of the jar, folks. There's not even a spice on this thing. You know, last time we came here, this place was called Italia. It's been changed, it's been remodeled, some things, left. you know, the, the, the back is uh, no longer there. There was a nice courtyard outside, that's gone. Um, and now it's called Italia. So they're going through a transition and uh, some of the aspects of what used to make this place really good are suffering. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm gonna fill my stomach with this and we're gonna head out in to 798 and see some great art what's going on here in China and uh, hopefully the day is going to get even better with all the cool things that we're going to see. So I'm going to finish this off and tell you utterly and completely avoid this restaurant. It's not worth your time. If I could say it any other way, I would, but that's it. End of the day. Seven nine eight, which used to be filled with small little galleries run by artists just scraping by trying to put food on their plate. Now that's all that is out here is people putting food on their plate. The whole entire place has been gentrified. Like I get it. Find something to do with the post-industrial part of China and do something with it. And I think when the artists had control over it, uh, it was doing really well. But now there's just cafes and an Audi dealership and a Volkswagen dealership. It's kind of ridiculous that the art scene has gone to such a corporate level because the government is so afraid to let artists express themselves that now this entire area has been gentrified and you can buy a Volkswagen after having yourself a nice little white latte. So, I don't know, there's a lot of good public art on display, there's a lot of great things to see while you walk in the streets, but now, just like anywhere else in a big city here in China, when you're walking the streets, you're pushing and shoving and there's people all over the place. So I, I still have yet to find a gallery that I want to go in and like see if there's an artist in there that's doing some really cool stuff. Um, I'm almost giving up hope here at this point, but let's just see what's, uh, let's just see what's going on. But uh, I'll see you guys back on the street. a lot and uh, this is my third time and every time I came here since I liked it a little bit less every time because now it's just a uh, restaurants and cafes there's no galleries no more. It, 
it, it, it became a tourist spot. Where the hell are the galleries? This is ridiculous. I'm gonna do my best to find you some galleries because at this point I am almost hopeless. This is some post-modernist, post-industrialist version in China of what art should be and what it should become. But I'm seeing, I'm, I, I'm seeing furniture stores that I can just buy that stuff online. I'm seeing motorcycle stores, car stores, and I am just really disappointed at this point. I'm gonna do my best though, so let's go see if we can find at least one gallery to show you. In the town where I grew up, on this land that I love, on this land that I love, on this land. Alright guys, we finally found some art. Uh, there should be some really good stuff in here, some modern uh, type paintings that are, you know, a little bit of a throwback to the traditional Chinese ink paintings. They're supposed to have some great color and some great landscapes, so let's go inside and see what's going on. We've been spending all our money on these shitty flats. We ain't ever gonna get it back. I know people Watching on the streets with us I don't blame them, it's a bloody mess And I wanna live it In the town where I grew up On this land that I love On this land that I love On this land that I love So we found some amazing modern Chinese lands Chinese landscape art and that was super cool. Now we're gonna head inside to Linda Gallery and see what's going on in there. It looks like they might have some cool modern art sculptures. You are, you are so weird. I'm 
a sculpture that reminds me of a bot, and this is where the penis is.
district here in Beijing, we are gonna get ourselves some gelato. So, let's see what this place is all about. Let's go inside, come on. Oh yeah, that is, uh, that's really good. I would definitely advise Vivi, uh, Vivi Dolce if you want to get yourself a little gelato fix. All right, thank God we were actually able to find a modern art scene here in China still going strong. I was really pleased with some of the galleries that we found and I am totally satisfied. Yeah, it may have turned into like a post-industrial Disneyland for the most part. A lot more cafes than last time, but there is still something here for you to see if you are willing to look hard. All right, I will see you guys for street food later. Oh my god, here we go. Alright guys, now I'm really sure that you want me to eat some of these scorpions, but I've got to tell you, I had a friend in Thailand do the exact same thing. And there's something you got to know about scorpions. In the mandible here, they also have poison. And sometimes if you eat them, you can still end up in the hospital despite the fact that the stingers have been removed or if you just don't eat the stingers in the first place. If you eat emperor scorpions, you've also got to de-hair them. They have hair on them that are kind of like uh, fiberglass and you don't want to swallow that. So I'm sorry guys, I am just not going to eat the scorpions today. Probably never. some of this. Another very popular 
Chinese street snack is uh, these sausages that kind of resemble hot dogs. They don't taste like hot dogs, but they're pretty darn good and are safe for kids. Um, if you guys are coming into these crowds with kids, just ask for the no spices. All right, let's give it a try. Oh yeah. My crazy wife is eating an entire lizard. Get the head. Oh my god, how is it? Let everybody know. What does it taste like? All right, so as you can see, Bo Jun just ate an entire lizard, which we were given accidentally when we ordered these. I can't believe she even ate it. I didn't want to eat that thing. It looked kind of uh, like it was dead on the ground like forever, but this still looks as fresh as it would if you were swimming in the ocean. And I'm going to give Seahorse a try. Here we go. Well, that's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. It tastes like, uh, I don't know, like like dried fish that's been oily and fried. That was nothing. All right, that is seahorses, guys. Give it a shot. guys and thanks for joining us we made it down here to this street food market and we came and got what we were looking for I hope you guys enjoyed it but now it's off to get some real dinner we're gonna go get some Hunan food which is quite similar to Thai food it's west southwest here in China and we're gonna go check that out see you guys in a bit We're going to tuck into some of the fine dining here in Beijing and try this. Um, this here is, I'm not sure what it is, but it looked very interesting. Um, what is the name of this, Bojun? Ji Dou Far. Ji Dou Far. All right, let's give it a try. Mm. It's really nice. Not as spicy as I thought it would be, but uh, it's actually really nice. It comes with these... Uh, little greens, I think they're the greens of onions, some peanuts, and some spring, spring, um, some, uh, the spring bean sprouts, there we go, we got this. Oh, that is awesome. It's really light. It looks super spicy, but it's really light. Okay, now we're going to check out the next one. All 
All right, so I ordered some stuff that looked kind of like Thai food. This looks like a Thai pad kapow, and this looks like a papaya salad because it's close to the region in the world where Thai food and Chinese food kind of mix. So I'm gonna tuck into this and see what this is all about. All right, here we are. Oh, it's a bit more dry than pad kapow. Um, it doesn't really have the spice to it. I'm surprised by this. It's not very spicy at all. It's good though. It's definitely good. But if you're thinking it's going to be like Thai food, it's not really. All right. Now let's try this papaya salad. That's literally a papaya salad. So let's see what that's all about. All right. Let's dig into that. It's good, but it's very much not Thai. It's not even spicy. It's got um, what looks to be some fried pork on it or something. And uh, there is no fish sauce, and it's not spicy at all. Mm. However, it's amazingly good. Okay, we're gonna check out some fish next because we have a lot to go here, and we'll see you when the fish arrives. Now we're gonna tuck into this fish stew that looks remarkably similar to a tom yum pla right there in Thailand. So it's pretty much a spicy fish soup. All right, let's check this out. All right, get the skin off. Mm. Okay. It's definitely a freshwater fish, of course, given the region. You've got to kind of expect that. And I don't like freshwater fish at all. This fish is really good. I actually like this fish. So, I am really happy to have brought you this Yunnan food. And tomorrow we are going to head into the Forbidden City and show you what's going on inside there. Until then, I'm going to tuck into the rest of this, fill my belly, and uh, call it a night. Thanks for joining us today. See you guys soon.